This guy is the 10th richest person on the globe. He didn't start a company, he wasn't a genius investor, nor did he invest in Bitcoin. He got a net worth of 90.8 billion by working a 9 to 5. A man who is a billionaire worth 51.7 billion dollars. Steve Ballmer, the former Microsoft CEO, he once beat Bill Gates. His story is proof that anybody could do it. Today I'm gonna show you how he did it and what you can learn from this. True race, Steve wasn't a genius, special kid with great potential. He was normal. His dad was from Switzerland and he worked as a manager in Ford. And his mom was born in the US from a Jewish Russian descent. Steve Anthony Ballmer was born March 24, 1959 in Detroit. Steve got good grades, really good grades. He was a national merit and scored 800 on SATs which is enough for Harvard. Steve cared a lot about education and school activities. That's why he was a manager for the Harvard Crimson team and worked in school newspaper. Schools like Harvard give you tons of opportunities. There he met a young ambitious kid who will change both of their lives. That kid's name was Bill Gates. As you all know, Bill dropped out of Harvard to pursue Microsoft. He asked Steve to drop out too and come to Microsoft. In today's time, it's risky to drop out of college to go work for a startup. Now imagine doing that in 1975. At that time, nobody heard about computers. It was pure insanity to drop out of college like Harvard for computers. You know what's not insanity? Hitting the subscribe button for more amazing videos. Did Steve drop out of Harvard to go with Bill? That's where two friends separate. Steve went up to finish his education and got the job as an assistant product manager in Procter & Gamble. And Bill went all in on Microsoft. After two years of working for Procter & Gamble, Steve got two ideas. One idea is to write screenplays for Hollywood. And the second idea is to go to Stanford to get an MBA. Guess which idea was successful? Steve approached his old friend Bill for a summer job in Microsoft, but Bill wanted more. He tried for a second time to convince Steve to drop out and become Microsoft's first manager. This time it's different. Steve was hooked. See, Steve got a harder diploma, two years of experience in a famous company and one year left in Stanford. Even if Microsoft fails, Steve wouldn't have a hard time finding a high paying job. Bill Gates did it. Steve Ballmer became the 30th employee in Microsoft. When he told his parents about it, his dad was like, WTF is software. And his mom was like, why would a person ever need a computer? Which is now insane. Steve got a yearly salary of $50,000, which is now $163,000. And more important than that, Bill Gates promised him five to 10% of equity in Microsoft. His title was business manager, but in reality, as he said, he was an assistant to Bill and did everything from hiring to washing glasses. Steve's time to shine was in a meeting with IBM. He didn't go to that meeting because he was a genius business manager, but because he was only one there who got a tie and had some little negotiation experience. The meeting was about MS-DOS. Ever heard about that? IBM would pay Microsoft $430,000 to make MS-DOS. The Microsoft guys sneaked a little deal in which they will be able to sell MS-DOS to other computer manufacturers. That would make them millions and IBM pay them to make a software for them. Now don't think that IBM is stupid or anything. They were under investigation for monopoly. So they let that deal pass. In 1981, they had revenue of $16 million. And in 1985, a revenue of over $140 million. Bill delivered his promise of five to 10% equity to Steve and gave him 8% equity. The company went public in 1986 and it was valued at $780 million. Gates' 45% equity was worth $350 million. Allen's 25% equity, $195 million. And Ballmer's 8%, $51.5 million. Over the next six years, he worked in many divisions in Microsoft in many roles. In 1992, he took the role of vice president of sales and support. Six years in that position, he was promoted to the president of Microsoft, second in command after Bill Gates. Two years after that, Bill Gates stepped down as CEO and Steve Ballmer took over. 
Bomber's leadership wasn't well remembered. People thought that he wasn't a good CEO. Firstly, because Microsoft's stock didn't move nor up nor down for 14 years. And he had some, how should I say it, weird moments. Developers, developers, developers. Maybe he just wanted attention to Microsoft because Steve was really passionate about Microsoft. I'm sure that the stagnation in the stock wasn't Steve's fault. Gates left Microsoft just before the dot-com bubble crash, so Steve got a lot of cleaning to do. And after cleaning up, a financial crisis came. Under Steve's leadership, revenue tripled from $25 billion to $70 billion, and net profit went from $9 billion to $22 billion which was double that of Google and IBM. Steve was a proponent of Xbox. Executives didn't believe in gaming and thought that Microsoft should stick to software. But Steve stood by Xbox and it's now one of the most successful and most famous Microsoft products. Also in 2007, Microsoft invested 240 million in this company that was then worth 15 billion. Now that company is worth trillion and its name is Facebook. In summary, the investors and the public didn't see the impact of Steve's leadership until he left. He left Microsoft in 2014. In 30 years, he sold 40% of his equity. A few months after he left Microsoft, he bought the LA Clippers for $2 billion. A year later, he invested in Twitter, getting 4% equity, but he sold it all four years later. His regret was not focusing so much on the smartphone market and he didn't believe in iPhone. <laughs> $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. And who knows if Balmer didn't sold his 4% equity. He will be now worth around $150 billion. But that's just what if. He will only go up. So that's it. That's how Steve Ballmer became a multi-billionaire by working in 9 to 5. The secret is he was just at the right place at the right time and got a good network.